Well, hello there, friends. In my last video, I went over my personal favorite K-pop debut songs of all time, and I got many, many comments and likes about it. I appreciate everything that you've said, and of course, for mostly keeping our shared comment space civil. I might test that attitude because for this video, I'm going to tackle the K-pop debuts that were panned by critics and fans. In case you're wondering, I'm not here to say that I think that they are all bad. This is not my personal opinion, and hell, I like a few of these songs, but this topic is based on the general K-pop community's opinions about these songs. Some of them have their charm, but overall, they're often looked on as embarrassing first songs for some of these groups. The good thing, though, about some of these examples is how some acts can overcome a faltering debut and still go on to have successful careers. But as you'll see, not all of them did. But before we continue, please do me the huge favor by hitting those like and subscribe buttons for me. Your continued support really helps me out here in YouTube land. And so without further ado, let's get started with this video. Debuting back in 2011 under Entertainment Pascal, the girl group Stellar generated buzz for being under the direction of Shinwa's Eric. While many K-pop fans of today know Stellar for their promiscuous bops like Marionette and Vibrato, their debut song Rocket Girl was deemed a critical failure. The girls suffered the same fate with their follow-up song UFO, and it didn't look good for the group until they radically remade their image by abandoning the cute girl concept and opting for the more bold songs with sexualized choreography that they became known for. And while they may have had some success in the run, they disbanded in 2018 after the seven-year contract ended. Regardless, they left their mark on K-pop and gave us wonderful songs they will forever be remembered by. In some cases, a group might already be controversial before they even debut. An EXP edition was a prime example. Four guys from around the world wanted to do a quote-unquote experiment or academic project to train in Korea, study the language, and debut as their own K-pop group. Their 2017 debut song, Feel Like This, showed their lack of sufficient training in dance and language, and their debut music video was panned from the beginning. K-pop fans from all over the world have called them out for cultural appropriation and sparked a debate on whether or not they really qualify as K-pop and they remain divisive. It's hard to break into an established and xenophobic industry like K-pop and not take some hits. In some ways, you can argue that it's like the reverse of when K-pop artists were trying to break out of Korea and not doing so well abroad. Regardless, the boys have pushed through and are still technically active today as they are setting out to prove to the public they're the real deal. Here we are just a few years after their debut, and from what it seems, their Korean television appearances have proven that they have the support of the Korean fans. It's just a matter of winning over the international K-pop fan community. The short-lived girl group Chi Chi debuted in March of 2011 with the song Don't Play Around. While the song itself wasn't panned, it was their debut stage on Music Bank that damaged the group's reputation. Shortly after the performance, an MR removed video for Chi Chi's debut stage circulated that edited out the music and only kept the group's less than ideal vocal quality. In the now deleted clip, the girls were lip syncing during parts of the performance and were off key when they did sing. The viral video damaged the group's reputation from the start. The video haunted the band, and although the girls continued on with better received songs, Longer and Love is Energy as follow-up tracks, energy, 
And sadly, to the dismay of devoted fans, Chi Chi disbanded in 2013, only after two years, leaving the industry as a group that had so much potential. Even though the song itself had the backing of being a JYP produced song, Nine Muses 2010 debut song No Playboy was memorable in the worst of ways. The group members' looks became the major promotional focus to the detriment of their vocal training, and it showed. They were even crowned as quote unquote horrible debut back during that time by Korean netizens. They were also labeled as Girls' Generation's copycats for simply having nine members. And the publicity surrounding their 2012 documentary Nine Muses of Starship Entertainment did not help their cause either. But Nine Muses show that they had what it took to evolve, and after much investment and some lineup changes, the girls pulled through. 2012 was a renaissance of sorts for the group with the comeback of news, they since had a string of hits and well-received songs in the years after, including notable songs like Dolls, Glue, Wild, and Hurt Locker, thus overcoming the bad publicity that was No Playboy. They sadly disbanded in 2019 without ever getting that first win they so deserved, but they still managed to leave their mark on K-pop with a remarkable discography overall. The girl group Kachi debuted in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic, y'all, to be the first European K-pop group with multinational members. Singing in English and Korean, the group's debut song, Your Turn, has garnered a very respectable 12 million views at the time of this video. The group's name comes from the Korean words to symbolize togetherness, value, and unity. But in actuality, K-pop fans' opinions are divided. The group's debut has been poorly received as some K-pop fans have called them out for trying to capitalize on the popularity of K-pop with their debut and saying that the band lacks the necessary skills in dancing, singing, and production quality to make it in the competitive industry. Being labeled as Korea Boos, Kachi became the center around the subject of white people debuting in K-pop and rumors spreading that the group was secretly headed by the infamous Ali London who himself is a controversial figure in K-pop. The negative publicity has even forced the group's label to turn off the music video's like-dislike option on YouTube. However, there is some hope. Some K-pop fans are saying that if the girls improved overall, then the idea of a K-pop group like Kachi wouldn't be an issue. And they're trying. The girls' follow-up song, Photo Magic, was met with better reception, as many noted an improvement from their debut. Personally, I see nothing wrong with being inspired by K-pop. If it's your dream to be a singer and make it in the K-pop music industry, then all the best to you. Girls' Day has had a wonderful career in the 10 years since they debuted with amazing hits like Twinkle Twinkle, Expectation, Female President, and Something. The band debuted with Jihei, Jisun, Jiin, Sojin, and Mina in the summer of 2010 with the much maligned Tilt My Head. And my god, those outfits are rough. Oh honey, bless your hearts. Uh, but the song attempted to capitalize on music trends including auto-tuning and innovative choreography with microphones that I have not seen again. Uh, but anyway, but the efforts fell short. K-pop fans often look back at this debut as a potentially catastrophic stumble, but the band and its label moved quickly. Two months after the group's debut, Jisun and Jean departed from the group and Yuda and Hyeri joined. Thankfully, their third single, Nothing Lasts Forever, totally redeemed the group.
You might even consider that their first real debut since two-fifths of their group was replaced. And after Jihei left the next year, the group settled into the much-loved foursome we have come to know today. Labeled as the worst K-pop debut of all time, Oldie's debut was met with criticism even before her first song dropped, as rumors circulated that her father used his wealth and connections to attempt to make her a star. At just 14 years old, Oldie, also known as Baek ji in Korea and Tanaka Sori in Japan, had her first and last television performance of her music career on Music Bank on January 2nd, 2009. The live performance was a debacle to say the least, with unstable vocals, technical difficulties, and Odie's nervousness combining to a disastrous effect. Because Ori means duck in Korean, many thought she would make a metaphorical change into a swan at her next comeback, but the damage was done. Faced with unrelenting backlash and online bullying, Ori left her company shortly after the live performance and was reportedly working for a period at a duty-free shop in a Korean airport before relocating to Tokyo. The ridicule and online hate she received forever changed Odie's life, and her debut serves as a lesson for would-be K-pop stars. It shows that more than a decade later, the online community can still have power over someone's life and well-being. So please, choose your words wisely when commenting on what you see. Someone's life may be changed for it, and I'm sure you'd rather that change were for the better. Well, that's it for today, friends. I only covered seven K-pop debuts for this video's topic and left more for potentially more parts to this series. If you want me to share the history of other groups, share your thoughts in the comments. And as always, thank you all for watching. I appreciate your support. Please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And while you're here, check out many more of my videos and see you next time.